hey hello everyone so welcome to my uh, this lecture in this lecture i'll be doing question number 6 7 20 23 and 30 of the gate question paper 2021 okay so as you know i'm doing only organic question paper and i'm doing five questions in one session so these are the five questions which i'm going to do in today's class right uh, right so let's see the first question the cu first question says the reagents required for conversion of hex 3 ion to hex 3 ene so basically is converting alkyne into alkene and what is the point they have added extra specific point is converting into e e means across that means basically trans the choices given are h2pdbso4 second one is bu3snh third one is uh, uh, lithium liquid ammonia and fourth one is lithium aluminum hydride let's go uh, choice by choice and then see uh, where we come so first choice is in presence of h2pdbso4 so now this is very very important very very known catalyst it is called as lindlar's catalyst so here basically you know we are doing catalytic hydrogenation hydrogen which sits on the palladium and does the reaction but we add bso4 why do we add bso4 bso4 poisons the surface so it reduces the activity and therefore reaction will go from alkyne up to alkene but it will not go up to alkane so that's what it does so let's see how the mechanism mechanism is like this so this is the metal okay this is a palladium and on this hydrogen goes and attach a two molecule is there but because it is attaching through this metal surface even the bond between hh breaks and then it goes and basically adds up from the two sides now because it adds from the one side it will always give you z product you see it will always give you z that is cis product so this definitely first one cannot be the answer um yeah that's the answer here let us explain why why is it z first we have to give priority okay so priority of the substituent across the double bond so this is the double bond so i have to give priority on the both the substituents on this carbon on this carbon basically and on the this carbon so let's look and uh, look at here so on this carbon first substituent is hydrogen here the first bond leads to carbon so we have to just see the atomic number where we go bond by bond first bond itself differentiate this is hydrogen this is carbon carbon has higher atomic number so this gets first preference hydrogen gets second preference similarly if you go here so first carbon and then comes hydrogen so now you see one and one are on the one side priorities of the same same priority substituents on the same side so it is called as together and it is z if they are now opposite then they would be called across that is e right let's look at next one the choice b we are using bu3 snh now tin hydride it is so tributyl tin hydride it undergoes reaction always by radical mechanism so generally it's not that easy to break snh bond so we use aibn but sometimes reaction starts without aibn also aibn you know is a uh, radical reaction initiator so we put very little amount of it just to initiate the reaction so if you put bu 3 snh it will break up like this right now generally what it is used for if you have alkyl halide you want to convert into alkane so this r dot comes here and it takes away this proton and it gives r that's what mostly it is used for let's see what happens here so i look quite a bit we i didn't find any reaction you know where they have reacted alkyne with uh, bu 3 snh and not even one paper was there my guess is this so this will break up and this will come here and proton gets added here now this dot is there now this dot uh, can be up or down like uh, a dot is basically a radical so this orbital can be here also orbital can be up also so ideally it should give both the product that it should add up from top or down but still the thing is always mechanism will be preferred always will, mechanism will be preferred which goes through stable transition state so this alkyl group and this alkyl group should will try to be far okay so rather than rather than this no this will be more preferred why because if you see here 
here hydrogen is away and here something like it can go and attack here bu 3 snh and so that this alkyl group bulky alkyl group and this bulky alkyl group are apart from each other but whatever happens even if it happens from this side or it happens from top because the radical both lobes are open what you get at the end is only this and then they have not given any reagent once bu 3 snh is attached you have to hydrolyze it to form something else they have stopped here so to stop here you are not going to get your trans alkene for sure let's look at the choice d choice d is lithium aluminum hydride now lithium aluminum hydride is basically hydride donors you need the h minus kind of thing so for negative positive charge is important you need positive polarity something like if carbonyl group is there it will go and attract attack here in alkyne there is no such polarity there is no positive polarity at all so LiLH4 does not react with isolated double bond or isolated triple bond. With isolated triple bond some chances are there if OH minus is there beside them then it happens by coordination. So right now it is not applicable so need not explain but if it comes somewhere I will explain you again. Look in the option C. Uh, I did the option D first because option C was the right answer. So what is the option C? Option C says it is lithium and liquid ammonia. Now lithium liquid ammonia, whenever you see liquid ammonia and then uh, alkali metal lithium or sodium it is Birch reduction. Okay? Now Birch reduction always go by radical mechanism and goes stepwise. Okay? So when it goes by stepwise it will go through stable trans anion alkene. Very very important remember this it goes through stable trans anion alkene leading to formation of trans alkene. Okay? Let us see what happens. So, first what happens is these two break up. Uh, basically pi bonds, so two p orbitals are there. No? So, one of the p orbital takes electron, other p orbital takes electron and then another electron comes from the reaction between lithium and liquid ammonia. So, metals are electropositive, it gives electron, one side of it will take electron and get a negative charge. Now, negative charge is there and so that negative charge will go and take away proton. So you see what is happening is taking proton from top. Why? So that this alkyl group and this alkyl group remain, remain far away from each other. They are not on the same side. You know, this is on the down and this is on the top. Then it again takes electron, you get negative charge. Now negative charge, you see this, it takes another electron and you are getting trans, the anion adopts trans configuration. Why? If this H was down, and this alkyl group was on top then what happens this group and this group are bulky and they repel each other and therefore not very stable therefore not very stable and therefore double bond is trans to the hydrogen so that you get a stable transition state reaction will be faster and then liquid ammonia is there again this takes proton and you get trans product so both kinetically and thermodynamically favored so whenever you do birch reduction remember this from alkyne you will get trans alkene whereas if you do catalytic hydrogenation you will get z alkene okay that is it let us move to next uh, so again let us see why it is priority we talked again so you see here 1 and 1 are opposite each other so it is across 2 and 2 are opposite to each other so it is across so therefore the configuration is E right uh, let us move to next question answer is very clearly C, no problem. It says, this is a very interesting question. Organic compound exhibits M plus, M plus 2 plus and M plus 4 peaks in the intensity 1 is to 2 is to 1 in mass spectrum. So, it is doing mass spectrometry and then this is the data they are seeing. What they are seeing, 3 peaks are there. So, molecular and peak. So, in the last they are seeing. So, what they are saying there is one peak and there is another peak and there is another peak and they are saying that the middle peak is double the height of the first and third peak. Okay? So, that is what they have observed and what they see is the product shows a singlet at delta 7.49. Now, remember this region from 7 to 8 it is aromatic region in proton NMR. So, mostly aromatic protons com comes there. Some exceptions will be there, exceptions are always there, but generally that is what it is. Okay? And what it says is proton NMR in CDCL3 is there. So, compound they are saying it is 1,4 or 1,2 
one is di one dichloro one is dibromo again dibromo dichloro so basically it is saying dihalogen dihalogen benzenes are there so what the nmr says nmr says that the spectrum shows singlet singlet means it shows one single peak it shows one single peak in aromatic region so that means if it is showing one single peak that means all the hydrogens on the benzene ring are equivalent if all the uh, protons on the benzene ring are equivalent then only molecule uh, then only you will get one single peak otherwise if different different protons are there it will show that many different peaks so uh, let us look what are the possibilities if dihalogen alkenes are there ok so benzene is there imagine if you have dihalo benzene which both of them are in ortho position so here is there and here uh, uh, halogen is there now you see what happens it has four more protons this proton this proton this proton and this proton very clearly if you see you have to start seeing the neighbors so neighboring to this hydrogen is carbon when i move here another carbon when i move here i find another halogen if i move here i am finding another carbon if i move here i am finding another halogen similarly if i move from here also if i move here i find carbon then another carbon then halogen if i move here another carbon here another halogen so basically they both are identical chemically they are identical so they both will show one single peak okay similarly these two are identically uh, chemically identical so these two will show a single peak and it will not come as singlet it will come as doublet why because beside ha it has chemically inequivalent ha okay beside hb there is equivalent ha similarly beside hb there is equivalent ha these both are anyway same so this molecule should have shown two peaks and both the peaks should have been doublet so definitely ortho is removed they have not given choice for meta but i thought uh, let me discuss what's wrong so you have two halogens imagine here one hydrogen is there these two hydrogens are there one more hydrogen is there i need not explain so much time you can very clearly see this hydrogen is very different from all of them so this will show one single peak and beside them there is no other uh, hydrogen on the neighboring atom so this should show as singlet this will show as singlet one proton peak right now what about this these two are same because both beside both of them is the one hydrogen and beside both of them there is halogen and if i move forward there is another hydrogen another hydrogen so they both are exactly same so therefore i am putting this hydrogen and this hydrogen as hb and this hb will come as this hb will come as doublet because it is bes un beside another uh, unequivalent hydrogen a different chemically different hydrogen so two peaks already over and this will show a two proton signal this will show because this is showing one proton signal so this will show as two proton signal because two protons are there and it will come as doublet and if hc is there so hc is again different from all of them now it is beside two hbs so it will show as triplet so you are having three different peaks so definitely uh, it's not even meta derivative last if they are para so if they are para what happens so both are there and then you have ha ha this also is ha this is also ha because both top and down are same halogens okay it's not that uh, top is bromine down is chlorine it is both of them are bromine or both of them are chlorine so very clearly all of them are same and because they are same they appear as one single peak all of them are equal and nobody can split the other one so it will come as singlet right now i am left with two choices what are the two choices one four that means para one you know why it is one four right let me just explain last this also so you start counting from any other halogen so one two three and four so position one and four there are two halogens so it is one four dihalogen right so <coughs> So it is one for dichlorobenzene or one for dibromobenzene. So in between these two, we have to differentiate. So if the peak appear like this, m plus, m plus two plus, and m plus four plus, as 
1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio then please understand then please understand it has to be dibromo only why basically bromoin if you see predictable it will show atomic number 80 point something or 79 point something but basically 80 it is close to very close to 80 because it has two uh, isotopes okay it has two isotopes one is bromine 79 and one is bromine 81 now bromine 79 and bromine 81 they both are almost 50 50 percent okay they both are around 50 50 percent to each other so what are the possibilities in which they can be arranged it is possible that both position we have bromine 79 what's the atomic mass 158 because 79 plus 17 158 and this is 50 percent constituent uh, you know that i told be bromine 79 and bromine 81 both of them 50 50 percent so 50 percent plus 50 percent it should give a peak of 100 percent now another possibility is top one has 79 down one is 81 Another possibility, possibility is top is 81, down is 79. So, this, this arrangement where one of them has 79, other one has 81 has twice the probability than having both of them same 79 and 79 or 81 and 81. So, what happens? So, here 79 plus 81 is 160, 81 plus 79 is again 160. So, 79 is 50 percent, 81 50 percent, 100 percent again 50 percent 50 percent 100 percent so total 200 percent peak uh, intensity should be if this is 100 percent this will be 200 percent similarly this also will be 100 percent so total i am getting three peaks uh, peak uh, ratio will be intensity will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 and therefore the answer is b that is 1 for dibromo benzene good uh, Let us move to next question. So, this question took a lot of my time. Uh, it has given you 8 questions. I will explain them in great details, but in examination you cannot take so much time. You have to be smart. You look and you should understand uh, how what are the answer. Okay? So, it says among the following 8 molecules, which of them will exhibit stereoisomerism? Stereoisomerism is molecule has to be chiral, molecule has to be asymmetric. That means, no plane of symmetry should pass through molecule. If, if a plane of symmetry is passing through molecule, it will not have uh, another molecule which can be its mirror image and they will be non superimposable. That means they will not have an anxiomer. Basically, what it says is molecule have chiral centers. You know what is chiral center where all the substituents of an atom are different. Then they will have stereoisomers. So, we will understand one by one we will go. Okay? So, first molecule I have drawn here. Look at this molecule. This molecule, can you cut it like this so that you get two symmetry half? No. Uh, can you cut it uh, like this? No. I do not see. Uh, one possibility, uh, yeah, can I cut it like uh, in on the screen itself is cutting into two half and still I am not getting same. Why? Because if CS3 is front, then behind is hydrogen. So, you are not getting same uh, and even if uh, uh, um, it can be that both CS3 behind both hydrogen front then also the screen is not cutting into two equal halves. So, definitely it has all the stereoisomers possible. Okay? They definitely have stereoisomers and that too it has all the stereoisomers isomers because none of the stereoisomers which we can think of has a plane of symmetry. If, if any of the stereoisomers we can think has a plane of symmetry then that stereoisomer and anxiomer will not reduce. So, still it will have a stereoisomer, but number of stereoisomers will reduce, but in this case there is no such scenario. Okay. So, let us look, these are the two chiral centers, why? On this carbon it has four substituents, all are different, one is CS3, one is CS3, one is hydrogen, another is carbon coming up to oxygen, here it is another carbon coming out to oxygen, but this carbon is different because it has CS3 and H. Similarly, similarly, if I look at this molecule, uh, if I look at this carbon, it has four different substituents. So, what are the possibilities? So, generally number of stereoisomers is how many ever chiral centers are there to the power n. So, n is number of chiral centers. So, sometimes there will be lesser than to the power n, 
but never more than 2 to the power n. It has lesser than 2 to the power n when it is a meso compound, when it has planar symmetry. Then it is not, and then it is basically a chiral and it will not have an enantiomer. Okay? Uh, so, basically what I am saying is when it is meso compound, when they have planar symmetry, so that time it is optically inactive. So, if I draw its mirror image, we will see that is one and the same. So, if it is one and the same, then there is no difference and if there is no difference, there should be no different properties. So, they do not rotate light into any direction. So, that is optically inactive. We will understand that part later. Let us forget about that and focus on this. So, 2 to the power n is equal to 2 to the power 4, uh, 2 to the 2 power 2 that equals to 4. What are the possibilities? First possibility, put both hydrogen front so that both CS3 goes behind. Second one, just reverse it, put both CS3 front, put both hydrogen behind. Third one, in one of them put one CS3 front. Yeah, another one put one CS3 behind. And here you are just exchanging. So, here on this left carbon you are putting CS3 behind and front carbon CS3 front. Now, let us look into different and we will just try to understand what is enantiomers, what are diastiomers. So, that with this question I clear all the stereochemistry uh, part of the organic chemistry for you. Now, let us look between A and B molecule. What you have done is you have actually flipped it. You broke this bond, you have put hydrogen behind, you have put CS3 front. Similarly, here also you have broken it um, behind, it has come front. You have changed stereochemistry at both the chiral center. So, if a molecule has more than one chiral center and if you change the stereochemistry at all the chiral centers, remember that, then you are getting an enantiomer. So, what is an enantiomer? An enantiomers are stereoisomers which are, which are non-superimposable and are mirror images. So, one thing is very clear. One thing is very clear. It does not have planar symmetry, so we do not worry about that. You are flipping, so you are putting CS3 front and putting hydrogen behind. Similarly, here also, that means definitely this molecule cannot be, this molecule cannot be uh, superimposable on each other. A and B cannot be superimposable because you have broken bond and you have changed. How can, if you have changed something, it will remain same. And then it happens to mirror image. Mirror image we think no, no, they, we have to draw mirror image and see. No, basically bonds flip and therefore they are mirror images. And then you can look that actually A and B are mirror image. So, you can find out that they are enantiomers. Uh, see this, this is what is A and this is what is B, correct. So, CS3 were behind, now I flipped the bond, broken the bond basically. CS3 is front, here also CS3 is front, that is what it is. Now, I am rotating the molecule. Imagine I am catching this oxygen and turning it around like this 180 degrees. So, that oxygen comes off this side, whole molecule is turned. Then what happens? Then CS3 has gone behind and this CS3 also gone behind, H has come front. Now, look between A and B, the flipped part. So, what happens when you look at the mirror? What do you see first? You see your nose first because nose is projecting out. So, this part is projecting out, you are seeing here and H is front, so here also it is front, CS3 behind, so CS3 is behind. In the mirror also you will see that nose is front and ear is behind, same. So, this part is mirror image, and this part also exactly same. So, this A and B are enantiomers. Similarly, C and D also will be enantiomers. Uh, did I draw? Yeah, let us look at C and D. So, C and D, C what has happened? You have put here CS3 front. Here you have put CS3 behind. So now I have flipped it, I broke it. So here I put CS3 behind and here I put CS3 front. Now you have broken the bond, you have flipped it. So of course they will not be superimposable on each other. You try to fit in. If you put, uh, you lift this molecule and put on top of this, then what happens? This CS3 will not superimpose on hydrogen. This hydrogen will not superimpose on CS3. Similarly, similarly, this hydrogen will not sit on this CS3 and this CS3 will not sit on this hydrogen. So, they are non-superimposable. And then you turn it around, you turn this again, yeah, you turn this again 180 degrees, you get this and then you will see that they both are mere images. So, these two are enantiomers. Interesting thing is what is the relation between A, B with C and D? So, if you look with A and C, 
here both CS3 is behind, here one is front, one is behind. So, this part because CS3 is behind, this part also CS3 is behind. So, that means this part is superimposable. Please understand and appreciate this point, then only we will then only move ahead. Okay. So, what is happening here is sorry, one second, wait. Yeah, this part what happens is exactly same. You see, CS3 was behind, CS3 is here also behind. Hydrogen is front, hydrogen is front, oxygen is sitting on it. But here you have flipped. Here you have flipped, CS3 was behind. Here CS3 is front. That means this part is not superimposable, but this part is mirror image. So one half is mirror image, one half is superimposable. So overall what happens? Overall A and C is neither superimposable nor they are mirror image. Diastomers, diastomers means stereoisomers. Please remember this diastomers are stereoisomers which are neither superimposable nor mirror image. Similarly, A and D also are diastomers. Similarly, B and C are also diastomers and B and D are also stereoisomers. All that I have said, I have written in great detail here. You all can read through it. I will be putting this in the Google Drive and it will be there in the discussion section of the video. So, you can go and uh, look at my PDF also if you want later. Let us look at next molecule. So, this molecule, this is the chiral center and this is also chiral center. Why? Because this carbon attached to hydrogen, another with OH, another with phenyl ring, another with this part. Similarly, this is attached to hydrogen, OH, CS3 and another part. So, since four different substituents are there on both of them, it is called as, it is called as, uh, they both of them are chiral centers. So, how much uh, you are expecting? Again, 2 to the power n that is 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 and you will be getting 2 to the power 4. So, let us make both hydrogen in the plane and play with this part OH front, OH behind, CSC front, PH behind and here what you are doing are just reversing it. So, you are putting PH front, OH behind, here you are putting CS3 behind, OH front. So, what is happening? Since you have flipped on both the chiral centers, remember this the 1 and 2 will be enantiomers. Now, you flip on one of the positions. So, you make a diastomer of this, one of this, you will get diastomer of this and again 3 and 4 will be enantiomers to each other and uh, 3 will be diastomer to 1 and 2 and 4 will be diastomer to 1 and 2. Please go through it, thoroughly understand then we will move ahead. See what I have done is this part I left it as it is, correct now? This part I have left as it is. But here I flipped. Here OH was behind, I put OH front, CS3 behind. So, this part is superimposable, this part is mirror image. So, overall neither superimposable super nor mirror image. And this part I have done same operation with this. One part I left intact, other part I have changed. And now, these two are mirror images. Okay. Let us move to next question, uh, next choice, this one. Now, this one has two chiral centers. This carbon has hydrogen, this carbon has hydrogen. Now, it is cyclic system is lo logged. Okay, you do not have conformers. And uh, here what happens actually a plane of symmetry runs through the molecule. So, you are not, you cannot flip it because you have all logged the system. So, uh, imagine you are running through this, you understand? You are running a plane like this, it is cutting like that. Okay. So, basically plane is coming, a paper is coming which is coming in between it so that only this carbon, this carbon and this carbon are being targeted. Okay? So, you are breaking cutting across this. So, what happens? These three part are behind the paper. So, you look it is exactly same. So, therefore, it is inactive. Why inactive? Because see you draw the mirror image and see. Draw the mirror image, rotate it 180 degrees. And what you see is one, two, these two are exactly sitting on each other, they are superimposable. So, if they are not different, how can they show different properties? How can one rotate light in left uh, direction, one in right direction? So, this is non super, uh, these are, uh, they do not show uh, stereoisomers. Let us move to next molecule. See, this molecule now is very tricky. Generally, people think, okay, there is a plane of symmetry. So, forget it, it is not having stereoisomer. But no, do not think like that. The thing is this, th 
this carbon is tetrahedral this carbon is tetrahedral okay so if you draw this carbon what happens is you are getting like this bond like this bond and you are getting front and away so basically basically two of the bonds are in the plane and one is towards the viewer one is away from the viewer viewer so it has one chiral center so therefore numbers two is so much equal to two to the power one is equal to two how do we know that just flip the bond you break it and put it behind so you are having this now you see this and this they are never superimposable whatever you do okay uh, and you can see that this is mirror image you just turn it around and then what you see this part is part is there oxygen is oxygen is there and this part is there so it is definitely mirror image and because here you have flipped it cannot sit on this so that's why these two are enantiomers okay therefore these two are enantiomers think about it try as much as you want you will see that you will not be able to superimpose these two molecules on each other next is this so this molecule was very easy because it already has a chiral center and this one does not have and so of course you will have to um, at least two stereoisomers so we'll forget about this molecule next is this now this no it does not have does not look like plane of symmetry is there because this side tertiary butyl is there okay it does not have like this also plane of symmetry but and you it does not have chiral center so even if it does not have chiral center it can show pair of enantiomers if it does not have plane of symmetry correct because here all the carbons are sp2 hybrid so it is having three three bonds none of the carbon is having four different substituents so this can be optically active if it does not have plane of symmetry but i'll show you very soon that it has plane of symmetry and therefore it is optically inactive so i was saying if, if we cut here also as a plane like this plane means it should be two dimension not one dimension okay you are cutting you are getting like this or if you are cutting in between from the center also it looks like it is asymmetrical because that side tetrabutyl is group is there here it's not there but imagine you are cutting on the screen itself so this was tertiary butyl make it a big ball and this part was methyl correct no this part was methyl and this part is nitrogen which i have drawn it was nitrogen right yeah that was nitrogen which i have drawn now if you cut it from the screen this imagine screen is cutting into two half so if all are balls so this ball is cutting into two halves front is one half other is behind uh, behind is another half exactly same similarly tertiary butyl also cutting into so one half is outside another half is inside so this molecule is getting exactly cut into same two half and therefore since this molecule has plane of symmetry okay it is not asymmetric we saw it does not have chiral center so it will not have stereoisomers if you want let us draw and see let us draw and see so let me draw the mirror image and you're getting this right just rotate it 180 degrees just zoop like that you turn it so this uh, tertiary butyl comes here everything else is same now you try to sit mix it so what happens this tertiary butyl sit on this this nitrogen sits on this this ch3 sit on this whole molecule you can literally make it sit on this so these two are superimposable so they are not different so they are not stereoisomers right next one is alenes now on this carbon two ch3 are there remember this if it was one ch3 and one hydrogen then this will be optically active but in alene if one of the carbon has both substituent are same they are optically inactive let us look why basically this carbon is sp2 sp hybridized and this is sp2 hybridized means means on this carbon two par two p orbitals are there which are unhybridized one will be 2py one will be 2pz so 2pz is coming outside the screen and inside the screen perpendicular i cannot i do not have three dimensional pen otherwise i would have drawn in the air exactly perpendicular coming front so let me draw something like this 
So what happens? This is also sp2 hybridized. So for this, imagine p orbital is unhybridized to p y. So these two, these two form pi bond together. They overlap. Here, what happens? Here, 2 p y will be involved in the sp2 hybridization, and 2 p z is what remains unhybridized, and therefore they, these both overlap. So what happens? This brings difference in the shape. What is the shape now? The shape is like this. So on this, two of them are in the plane and two of them, one of them is coming outside the plane and one is coming going inside the plane. So one is coming outside your screen and this CS is going away from the screen. So which is solid line means coming outside the screen and uh, dash dash means going inside the screen. Then what do you see? You see that this plane has, this molecule has plane of symmetry. How? Imagine this screen itself is cutting as a, as a plane, cutting into two half. This is a ball. So ball is cutting one half, identical half is front, identical half is behind, identical half is front, identical half is behind. And this part of the front of the screen is CS3, behind the screen is CS3. So it's cutting into exactly two halves and therefore it is optically inactive. You can draw the mirror image. What I said is here. You can draw the mirror image and then you rotate it and you'll see that they will be superimposable on each other. So basically this was there. So I'm drawing a mirror image. So what is happening? This is front. So here also this will be front. And then this part there is no issue. Then this part CS3 is front. So I do CS3 front, CS3 behind, CS3 behind. Now I now what I want to see if they are superimposable or not. I have drawn the mirror image. But if they are superimposable, then they are same. So I am rotating the 180 degrees. So again CS3, CS3 came here. So this CS3 sits on this, this CS3 sits on this. It's superimposable. And when I rotated this 180 degrees, what happened? H went this side, BR went this side. But they remain on top and bottom. Here also it is top and bottom. So they are superimposable. So it is not mirror image. This molecule was interesting. Now, here I can draw a lot of, here methyl, they have just given two methyls. Now, I can draw a lot of uh, stereoisomers. Whichever stereoisomer I draw, no, you will see that there is a plane of symmetry cutting across it exactly like this. But still, what happens? Because plane of symmetry cluster cuts through it, the number of stereoisomers reduce. But still, because this molecule has two chiral centers, it will have at least few stereoisomers. So because two and uh, two chiral centers are there, we should have expected two to the power two is equal to four stereoisomers. But you look that it will have meso compounds that is molecule uh, plane of symmetry runs, so it is optically inactive, and therefore they may not have enantiomers, but dash tubers are there. You will understand this if you understand. It will be uh, you will understand whole of stereochemistry. So. First thing what I have drawn is I have drawn both methyl in the front. So once I draw both methyl in the front at the position of 1 and 4, it is cutting the molecule into two exact halves. I am cutting it like this. So it is a plane which is cutting. So methyl is a ball. One half is on top, other half is down. Similarly, hydrogen is a ball. So one half is top, one, hydrogen, one half is down. And this part is anyway identical. So it has plane of symmetry. And uh, so what happens even if you draw the enantiomer of it, even if you draw the enantiomer of it, so what you do? You change the stereochemistry at both the carbons. You put methyl behind hydrogen front. You put methyl behind, you will put hydrogen front. You will see that they both are, they both are superimposable on each other. So this molecule is optically inactive and will not have enantiomer. Enantiomer is what we define as optical activity. There are two molecules. We know that bonds have broken. So one will rotate light in right direction and one will rotate light in left direction. Whichever rotates light in right direction, we call it dextrorotatory. Whichever rotates in left is called as levorotatory. But here, because they both are superimposable, that means there is no difference. There is no difference then how can they show property difference? So they are optically inactive, right? Next one, uh, what I have done is, I have put CS3 front in one of them, one of them CS3 behind. Now here also plane of symmetry runs through it. So there is no enantiomer for this also. So I hope I have done, oh, I did not draw 
but yeah basically this also if you draw the mirror image if you just flip it if you just flip it and or you can directly draw mirror image and see so what happens this me you flip behind you put hydrogen front this hydrogen you flip behind you put methyl front so what you are doing is basically changing at both the positions so you are drawing the enantiomer we talked before that if it has more than one chiral center if it has more than one chiral center you have to make an enantiomer you have to change at all the chiral centers you have to change the stereochemistry so you are doing that but still you will see that they both will be superimposable so they are not enantiomers but interesting thing is what about 1 and 2 what about 1 and 2 here both methyl are front here one methyl is front one methyl is behind even if you rotate it you will get same thing so these two are not superimposable so what happens is 1 and 2 are diastereomers remember this so still this also will have stereoisomers though they are optically inactive both sin cis and trans this is cis product because both methyl are on the same and this is trans product one methyl is front one methyl is behind but both cis and trans are optically inactive but cis and, cis and trans by themselves are stereoisomers this is very important model, this thing uh, example so overall how many are there so overall total five molecules are having stereoisomers you can go back and check let's go to next question the next question says the number of signals in proton nmr spectrum for the following compound so this was one of the easiest question i would say so they have given you benzene ring and on one bromine is there three acetyls are there so what happens is this acetyl and this acetyl is exactly same why because if we come here one bond up one bond up both are carbon both are bromine one bond carbon one bond carbon one bond carbon one bond carbon and then again acetyl group but but this acetyl is not same as this acetyl why here after one sorry after this acetyl is anywhere there one to second bond is bromine here is one two three fourth bond is bromine so clearly these two acetyl are same these two acetyl are same but this acetyl is not same so what happens so how many peaks will be there first all the hydrogens so i have drawn on the benzene hydrogen so these both hydrogens are same you can see neighboring to this exactly same as neighboring to this uh, neighboring groups of uh, this so these two are same so it is ha similarly these two hb because these two are identical and these three are different so they are identical so we are having four one two sorry three so it will show three peaks right so it will show three peaks last question for today the major product formed in the following reaction now this was pretty tough it took pretty long time for me to solve okay uh, so you are having tosylate hydrazine kind of thing okay molecule hydrazine nh2 nh2 is hydrazine so it's kind of hydrazone yeah and uh, you are putting a strong base sodium ethoxide initially thought it must be uh, which reaction is this uh, it, it looked like to me a Shapiro reaction because you know Shapiro reaction you use n butyl lithium and you have uh, NH NHTS but it gives a very different product you get a alkene but it was certain extent it is similar what guides the reaction is this what guides the reaction is this tosyl is a good leaving group so we have to think about how to make this leaving group how to let it um, remove from the group and apart from that what you have to remember is this nitrogen two nitrogens next to each other whenever possible they will try to get n triple bond n n triple bond n and then it leaves why wonderfully stable because three three bonds it is having lot of uh, bond energy is there when three bonds are formed lot of energy is released very stable and therefore these are the two things which will guide you for the these are the two things which will guide you about the mechanism so you know sodium ethoxide basically very powerful uh, base so this takes away this proton and you get nitrogen you get negative charge and then what happens is then this negative charge migrates it comes here and this bond comes here and you get 
you get negative charge on this carbon. Now what happens? You understand this? This is a three membered ring, very unstable. Little chance it gets, it will immediately break up. That's why this is the driving force. This is making this unusual reaction happen. So this negative charge comes here and this oxygen gets out and you get double bond here, you get O minus, right? And then this minus comes here and this is what is happening. This is what the guiding force of the reaction I was telling. This looks very difficult. Why sigma bond is breaking? Sigma bond is breaking because nitrogen wants to break out and tocyl is already a good living group. So bond comes here, this comes here, you get a triple bond, this N2 leaves, N2 cellulite leaves and you are getting this product. Now if I spread it, it will become like this. Now there are two functional groups, one is alkyne group and one is carbonyl group. Any day carbonyl gets more preference than alkyne group. So you have to start counting from uh, where alkyne gets lower uh, ranking, um, now counting, okay. So I am counting from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so no name. Then what happens? Alkyne becomes substituent, so it will come as prefix. Functional group is ketone, so parent compound, parent compound is ketone and alkyne is, alkyne is your uh, substituent, so it will be prefix. So basically name comes as known, 6-ine, because it is coming, prefix is coming early, ine is al uh, substituent. So 6 ion because at position number 6 I am having triple bond and then position 2 I am having ketone so 2 ohm. So that is it for today. Thank you very much.